Hi everybody, in this video, we're gonna be specifically looking at a budgeted income statement and how to create that. So let's just jump right into an example. So representative of the various departments of Go Sports have assembled the following data. As the business manager, you must prepare the budgeted income statements for August and September. Now, I wanna go ahead and present this information to you. Um, but what I hope you find out about budgets is they are not overly challenging, but they're very tedious. So you're going to see that we're going to present a lot of information here, and you're going to have to be really organized with it. That's really what it comes down to. You've got to be really organized with all this data. All right, so letter A or says that sales in July were $196,000. You forecast that monthly sales will increase 3% in August and 2% in September. Letter B. Go Sports tries to maintain inventory of $50,000 plus 20% of sales budgeted for the following month. Monthly purchases average 60% of sales revenue in that same month. Sales budgeted for October are $220,000. Letter C. Monthly salaries amount to $15,000. Sales commissions equal 6% of sales for that month. Combine salaries and commissions into a single figure. Then we're given, in letter D, other monthly expenses, which are rent expense, depreciation expense, insurance expense, and income tax expense. So again, our objective here is to prepare Go Sports gross profit budgeted income statement for August and September. And we're given some additional instructions here to show cost of goods sold computations, and we're going to use a T account. It also wants us to round all amounts to the nearest thousand. Now, this just adds some additional um, frustration to the problem, but don't let that overly discourage you. If that hinders you a little bit, then don't worry about the rounding. Your numbers won't be exactly what mine are, um, but they'll be, they'll be close enough for you to realize whether you did it right or wrong. So for example, budgeted August sales would actually be 202,000. So we would take the 196,000 of July sales, multiply that times the 3% increase, which would be 103% of July or 1.03, which doesn't exactly equal 202,000, but when you round it to the nearest thousand, then it becomes 202,000. And then September sales would be 206,000, which is 202,000 from August times 1.02, or a 2% increase, uh, which doesn't ex exactly equal 206,000, but again, when we round to the nearest thousand, you get $206,000. All right, so here I've shrank the data into the upper right hand corner so we can have it on the screen with us. And I've already drawn the August inventory T account. So let's just go ahead and input the data here into this T account. And I'm going to have a beginning inventory, of course, and an ending. And we'll have purchases that make our inventory account go up. And we'll also calculate our cost of goods sold in this T account. So they don't really give us any information in the story regarding beginning inventory or how to calculate it. What they do tell us in letter B is that we try to maintain inventory of $50,000. Well, what does that mean, maintain inventory? It really sounds like ending inventory, doesn't it? Okay, so let's think about ending inventory. Ending inventory from the current month becomes beginning inventory for the next month. So how could we then calculate beginning for August? Well, beginning inventory for August would have been ending inventory for July. So in calculating beginning inventory for August, let's just calculate ending inventory for July since that's the kind of information that they provide for us. All right, so they tell us that we try to maintain $50,000 plus 20% of sales budgeted for the following month. Now remember, we're calculating ending inventory for July. 
So the following month would be August. So we're going to multiply this times August sales, which they already give us in the problem at $202,000. So when we calculate this out, we should find this to be $90,000. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do the ending inventory for August since we've got that fresh in our minds. Okay, so we know ending inventory, we're trying to maintain $50,000 plus 20% of the following month sales. Well, now we're doing August, so the following month will be September, and September sales are $206,000. Now, when you calculate this amount out, you will get, and again, rounding to the nearest thousand, we get $91,000. Now, let's try to calculate purchases. Well, also in letter B, they tell us that monthly purchases average 60% of sales revenue in that same month. All right, so we're going to calculate our purchases here, which are going to be equal to 60% of sales in that same month. So again, August sales were $202,000. So in this case, purchases then will equal, rounded to the nearest thousand, $121,000. Now we have enough information that we can calculate cost of goods sold. So remember to calculate cost of goods sold, typically, well, typically in a T account, what we would do is take our debits minus our credits and that would give us ending. So beginning plus purchases, minus cost of goods sold would give us ending. But we can rearrange that algebraic expression and take beginning plus purchases, subtract ending, and that will give us cost of goods sold. And you should find cost of goods sold to be $120,000. Now we can move on to actually creating our income statement. And we're doing August right now, so Sales revenue for August, they tell us, is 202000 We calculated cost of goods sold right here at 120000 That leaves us gross profit of 82000 And now we can subtract our um, operating expenses. Well, um, they tell us to put salaries and commissions in the same category, and they tell me in letter C, monthly salaries amount to $15,000, so I'm going to write it out here, $15,000 plus 6% uh, of sales for that month. So 6%, so 0 0.06 times 202,000 was my sales or were my sales for August. When you multiply that all through, you should end up with 27,000. Again, I'm rounding to the nearest thousand. Rent expense, they tell us in the story here, are 13,000. Depreciation expense, they tell us, is 4,000. Insurance expense is 1,000. And if we subtract all those from our gross profit, we end up with a $37,000 operating income. Now we can subtract our income taxes, which they tell us in the story in letter D, is 30% of operating income. Well, 30% of $37,000 is $11,000. And when we subtract taxes from operating income, we can calculate net income or loss. In this case, we would have a net income of $26,000. All right, so now that you've had a chance to walk through it, I'd like for you to pause the video, and I would like for you to do the exact same thing for September. So remember, you need to start with the T account so you can calculate cost of goods sold, and then you will do your income statement. Once you've completed it, come back and start the video back, and we will take a look at September together. All right, so here are August and September together, as well as the T account uh, for September. One thing I'll point out 
is remember that your ending inventory from August will become your beginning inventory for September. So that 91,000 just moves on over. Everything else was calculated pretty much the same way. Purchases being 60% of sales revenue in that same month. Ending inventory again was 50,000 plus 20% of sales in the following month. And they tell us in the story that October's sales were $220,000. So 50,000 plus 20% of October's sales, which were 220,000, gives us ending inventory for September. Again, rounded to the nearest thousand of $94,000. So beginning plus purchases minus ending would give us cost of goods sold of $121,000. And another thing I'll point out is salaries and commissions again. Notice our salaries and commissions actually are the same thing for August and September, but we're not multiplying times the same number. So in August, it was 202,000 times 6% plus 15,000. And in September, it was 206,000, because that was our sales revenue, times 0 0.06 or 6% 6 plus 15,000. But because we are rounding to the nearest thousand, these become the same number.